we're glad you've joined us. Hey, good church this morning, and we come back for a fresh blessing uh, this evening. This want to be in our service in prayer. Brother Larry, would you begin our service, please? Amen. 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 Okay, just a few announcements real quick, and we'll get right into the uh, service this evening. Wednesday worship, 7 o'clock. Lord willing, I'll be preaching Wednesday evening. Uh, Saturday is our wild game dinner, and it finally got here, and that's going to be a great evening. Begins at 5 o'clock, and uh, it, it, it always is good. So we're really looking forward to that. That's this Saturday, okay? Uh, other than that, we got a lot of, if you wasn't, here this morning, you'll notice in the newsletter, there's just a whole bunch of things for you to add to your calendar for this year. A lot of events, of course, there'll be a lot of other things added as we get closer to them, but here's some of the main events that we know is going to be in this year's calendar. So got a lot of good things going on, and we are looking for the Lord's blessings upon his church. Okay? Hey, God bless you. Glad you're here tonight. Let's stand as we begin with our first song. Brother James. First one is 323, the old account was settled. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. The old account was large and growing every day for I was always sinning and never tried to pay but when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe I said that I would settle I settled long ago long ago long ago yes the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was set up long ago. When at the judgment bar I stand before my king, and he the book will open, he cannot find a thing. Then will my heart be glad, while tears of joy will flow, because I came and settled and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. When in that happy home, my Savior's home above, I'll sing redemption story and praise him for his love. I'll not forget that book with pages white as snow because I came and settled and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. 
O oh, sinners, seek the Lord, repent of all your sin, for thus he has commanded, if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, up there you'll not regret it, you settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for I washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. Amen. You can be seated. 261, you must be born again. A ruler once came to Jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and light. Master made answer in words true and pain. You must be born again. He must be born again. He must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, He must be born again. Ye children attend to the word so solemnly uttered by Jesus the Lord and let not this message to you be in vain ye must be born again ye must be born again ye must be born again I verily verily say that glorious rest and sing with the ransom the song of the blessed the life everlasting if you would obtain ye must be born again ye must be born again ye must be born again I verily verily say must be born again. A dear one in heaven, thy heart yearns to see, at the beautiful gate may be watching for thee. Then list to the note of the solemn refrain, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. <clears throat> and page 588. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief. My soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings 
shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless and since he bids me seek his face believe his word and trust his grace i'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer may i thy consolation share till from mount pisgah's lofty height i view my home and take my flight this robe of flesh i'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell farewell sweet hour of prayer hey, it's time for our evening offering we may give to the lord this evening as we love him Brother Brad, lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
shine down upon me and fill me anew in every way, Lord. Let me be more like you. There's no hiding its wonderful glow. Family and children, my neighbors and all my friends, when I'm in Jesus, then all others will know. Lord, will that would hinder my sweet walk with thee. Now shine down upon me and fill me anew in every way, Lord. Let me be more like you. Shine down Okay, Brother Matt. What it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I speak? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Whoa. I can only imagine. Surround. 
surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. Well, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. When all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine.
What a nice Sunday evening crowd. Good to see all of you this evening. It really, really is. Turn with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. What is the thing that God blesses the most tonight? That's what we want to look at from the book of Daniel this evening. And then, uh, Lord willing, going to preach another message from Daniel Sunday morning, this next Sunday morning. What if... Things don't get better, because they may not, right? And uh, looking forward to preaching that message. Okay, the things that God blesses the most. Daniel chapter 1, we're going to begin by reading just one verse, and then we'll kind of take off from there. Verse 8, you that would like to, stand with me for the reading of God's Word, and we'll pray over it, and we'll get right into the message. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, and the Bible says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. The thing that stands out in that verse, Daniel purposed in his heart. You know what? He did some things on purpose, intentionally. Pray with me. Father, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus again, and we're still thanking you, Lord. Good church this morning, and we praise you for that. That's, uh, Lord, you always give the increase, and uh, so we praise you for that. Lord, bless tonight. Once again, we pray, bless the preaching of the word. Can't do anything without you. We need you to anoint the preaching tonight with your Holy Spirit. Lord, stir our hearts. Help us to realize the one thing that God really you bless tonight, and we'll see that in the scripture. Have your way right now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> you know what I've seen through the years? I have seen a lot of people start serving the Lord well. Get on fire for God, get determined, get committed, and I've seen some of those very folks not end so well. Good start, poor end. And so, you know, some folks just don't stick with it, obviously. Uh, how will we end our journey? How will we end the course? Are we going to be good starters and good finishers? Or are we going to end poorly, as so many do, it seems like? You know what? When, we, when it comes down to the end, and one day it will be the end for all of us, when it comes down to the day we face God, the truth is the only thing that will matter that day is what God thinks. <laughs> that's it. It, it. That's the only thing that'll matter. Not what we've uh, accomplished or the things we've done possibly or, uh, you know, all, all, you know, as we look back, nothing seems to really matter on that day but what God thinks. You know, have we been pleasing to God? That ought to concern us tonight. Amen? Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Here's Daniel. He's taken into captivity. At this particular point in his life, he's a young man. And you know what? He's probably 17, 18 years old maybe at this point. So he's a young man. And Dan, but even as a young man, Daniel purposed in his heart that he was going to serve the Lord. 
He purposed in his heart, you know, uh, on purpose, he intentionally decided he would serve his God uh, regardless. Now, with all of that in mind, let's go over to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, and we will look at the first four verses. Daniel 6. Now we're looking at old, an older Daniel. He's no longer 17, 18 years old. Now he's an older man. Some time has went by. And notice what this scripture says in Daniel 6, the first four verses. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel, get this, he was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. There was something impressive about Daniel. He had an excellent spirit within him. He was preferred over all the others. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Verse 4, And then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. I like this. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. I like this. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if you lived the kind of a life when all the critics started examining you and trying to find fault with you, they couldn't find nothing wrong with you. Wouldn't it be kind of neat to live a life that good where the, the, the enemy, so to speak, or those opposed to you just couldn't find anything wrong in your life? Now, that's what's going on here with, with, with Daniel. You know what? It says he's been preferred. He has an excellent spirit about him. And I believe with a whole lot of jealousy, these presidents and princes began to try to find occasion to find fault with Daniel. But that scripture said they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault in him. That did not mean, get this, that did not mean that Daniel was sinless. It did not mean he was living a perfect life. But it sure did mean he was living a right life. You know, he was living right with his God. Uh, so let's, let's see. What I want you to see tonight is this. Real simple message. What is the one thing that God blesses most this evening? And we see that in verse 4. I'm going to read it again. See if you can pick it out. The presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they can find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was, what's that word? He was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Church, I say tonight, that's the one thing God blesses most, our faithfulness. This is God's declaration of what he thought of Daniel. He's faithful. God said he was faithful. And you know what? That's what God says about Daniel there. He, he was faithful. And that, that says volumes, why he had a good spirit about him, why the hand of God was truly upon him. So with that, that's what we want to look at tonight for just a little while. What is the thing that God blesses most? And, and there's a lot of things that the Lord blesses tonight, obviously. There's a lot of things we can do to please God. There's many areas in our life we can work at and and, and do well uh, to bring blessing uh, to the Lord and to his church and to our families. And there's a lot of things we can do tonight to please the Lord. But what is that one thing that God blesses most? And I believe this. It's our faithfulness to him. Our faithfulness to God. More than anything, I need God's blessing upon my life tonight. I certainly need it. I, I hunger for that. More than anything... I need God's blessing on my family tonight. And you do too. Uh, you know what? What do we want to see? We want to see God's blessing upon our church. Can I get an amen? amen. We want God to bless the Gospel Light Church tonight. Uh, I mean, wouldn't that we've had some we've had some amazing days 
gone by. I, I mean, we really have. So before many of you came, we, Gospel Light has had some heyday times in, in the past with absolutely the church full to capacity, you know, 200 plus. Uh, but, but here's what would be neat. Wouldn't it be neat if the greatest days of Gospel Light might still be ahead of us? Man, let's not live back there. That's gone. I loved it. It was good. I still praise God for it, but it's gone. Wouldn't it be nice if the greatest days of gospel light still lie ahead? Uh, you know, God can do that. God is able. And, and here's what I think. If God can bless Daniel, even in Babylon, in that heathen place, God can bless anyone anywhere. God can bless us anywhere. So, so the key to get to the place where the Lord can bless, we got to be blessable. Is that a word? We, we got to be blessable. Uh, we got to be in a place where God can bless our faithfulness. Uh, everyone wants to live in that, them first three verses of Daniel 6. Daniel was first among all of them. He was preferred above all of them. He was first. Well, you know what? He was first because he was faithful. But he was preferred because he was in a right place with God. He was in a right place with God. Did Daniel have a reputation by the time we get to chapter 6? He absolutely did. I mean, in Babylon, what a reputation Daniel had. He was the dream interpreter. Hey, he was the man filled with the wisdom of God. That's what man thought about him. I mean, he was highly exalted, obviously, here even with the king, wasn't he? So as far as man went, Daniel had quite a reputation. But what was most important about Daniel is what God thought about him. And so, you know what? Uh, here's the thing. You're not what others think of you. You're what God knows you are. Because <laughs> man can look at us, with, and we've, we've, every one of us have somewhat of a reputation tonight. I, I hope to the better. And, but you know what? We, people see us the way man sees us. But God sees every one of you for who you really are. And that, that, that ought to sober us up, right? God sees us for who we really are tonight. And what God saw when he looked at Daniel, he simply said in that verse, he was faithful. Man, I like that. I mean, he was consistent. That's, and by the way, that's consistent with all the Bible. Faith, faithfulness. We see the importance of being faithful, I think, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And why shouldn't we? For God himself is faithful, right? Hey, we serve a faithful God tonight. God himself is the most consistent one that's ever, ever been through all eternity, of course. God is always faithful. God cannot fail. Uh, God is faithful in all that he does. Uh, even the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and said, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That's God's will for all of us tonight. So, so to sum up this thought, the one way to be blessed by God the most is to be faithful to the Lord. Amen? Let's establish that right there. If you don't get anything else, there's a lot of things you can do tonight to get blessed by the Lord. But the thing that will get you blessed the most is if you will be faithful. Faithful to the Lord. Faithful to His church. Now let's go back and see some of these principles. Go back to Daniel chapter 1 again. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 1. And we're going to pick up oh, at least four principles here tonight. Maybe a little more. I'm not, uh, not sure. But we got several principles, Bible principles that we're going to glean from tonight. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. It says this, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. You know, everything that Daniel had been familiar with was changed in a moment. When Daniel was taken into captivity, his whole world was turned upside down. His family is gone. His language that he spoke is now gone. And you know what? They even changed his name. 
Everything that he was familiar with and he knew in a heartbeat was gone. But Daniel, listen, but where, so where was God when all this was going on? God was where he's always been. God hadn't moved. Daniel changed location and much of his life changed from that moment on. But God is where he had always been. Faithful, right? Now here's principle number one. Faithfulness is not bound by circumstances or surroundings. I'm going to say that again. That's principle number one. Faithfulness, it's not bound by your circumstances nor your surroundings. And by that I mean this. You can be faithful anywhere. You can be faithful to God anywhere because God's faithful everywhere, yes. <laughs> right? Uh, you know what I was, I was told uh, many, many years ago when, we, uh, when I, I left Lettington Church, that was my home church, answered the call to preach. You all know the story. Went over to East Montero, a little one-room house and, uh, outside Deluxe Two-Seater and all that. And I, I was told way back then, uh, by some preachers, you'll never build a church in East Bond Air. You know, but you know what? You can build a church anywhere where God's at. Amen. And, and God's everywhere. God can bless us anywhere. We can be faithful anywhere. If God's in it, praise God, right? I mean, God is the same everywhere. Uh, and, I, I, and here's the thing. I never go anywhere by myself. I never go anywhere by myself. Uh, and by that I don't mean I always have Lana with me, but certainly I don't. I don't always have Pumpkin with me, so I certainly don't. <laughs> you know, uh, but I, I never go anywhere alone. Amen. Hey, God's with me. Yes. God's everywhere I go. I can be faithful anywhere because God's faithful everywhere, right? And so that, that's a principle we need to get a hold of tonight. So what, what I'm saying is this, even though Daniel's surroundings and circumstances Totally changed. God was in it, and God blessed him where he went. And Daniel remained faithful. Daniel remained faithful. So, you know what? Our God can help us to be faithful no matter where we're at tonight, no matter where I am. So no matter, no matter what you're dealing with tonight, and obviously many are dealing with so many things, uh, God is where he's always been. Be assured of that tonight, all of you. God is where he's always been. God's still on the throne. And you're never alone. No matter where you're at, you're never alone. God's with you. God's with us. So principle number one is this. We can be faithful anywhere because God is faithful everywhere. Principle number two, are you ready? Faithfulness is greater than any other gift. Faith, to be faithful is greater than any gift you may have from the Lord. Look at verse 4. Chapter 1, verse 4. Children in whom, talking about these, these uh, children of Israel that had been taken captive into Babylon, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored. Hey, get this. Talk about uh, some gifts. They were cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. I mean, these were gifted young men. They, they stood out from everyone else. They truly had been gifted by God himself. Even though they was young, they was very gifted. But notice truly the greatest thing about Daniel, God said it, I'll repeat it again, he was faithful. He was faithful. You know, some of you here in our church, we, we've got a gifted church. We really do. We, we've got so many people that are blessed with wonderful gifts. Uh, good news is they use them for the Lord. Praise God. And you know what? Some of you have been with, uh, get, gifted with several gifts, and there may be some of you that don't feel like you was in line when all the gifts was given out. You may feel like there's not a lot for you to offer. Uh, I can tell you this. There's one area. hope you're all listening right now. There's one area you can all excel in. Be faithful to God. Amen. Be faithful to the Lord tonight. That's one area you can all excel in. So you know what? Think about this. Um, 
when I'm dead and gone, and if the Lord tarries, that'll surely happen one of these days. I hope the one thing folks can say about your pastor is he was faithful. He was faithful. You know, Brother Herb, you still miss Herb? Man, I miss Herb so much. And, uh, you know, lost him, what, June? I believe it was June. And I still miss uh, that man of God. And Herb would tell you, he didn't have a lot of gifts. He didn't feel like he could sing, although he did okay. He did, there's a lot of things Herb didn't feel like he, he could do. He couldn't play an instrument. All of his sons are so gifted on instruments. Herb couldn't play anything. Couldn't sing, couldn't play an instrument. Uh, there's so many gifts that Herb didn't feel like he, he had. But i tell you what, Brother Herb was a great soul winner and a preacher. What, what can I say about Herb tonight? He was faithful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Like Daniel, God said he was faithful. When I think of Herb tonight, I can say, man, he was faithful, right? So that second principle, faithfulness is greater than any gift you may have. It absolutely is, and it's something we can all excel in. No matter who you are, you can be faithful to God. Principle number three, verses eight and nine. Chapter one, verse eight and nine. But Daniel purposed in his heart. That's intentional. That means on purpose he did something. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Now, here's principle number three. Are you ready? Some of you is writing this stuff down. It's good stuff. Faithfulness proceeds favor. Faithfulness comes first, and then the favor of God. In fact, verse 7, let's go back and look at verse 7. It's right there. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name uh, Beltalchazar, and unto Hanani, uh, Shadrach, and the Mishael, Meshach, and the Azariah, uh, Abednego. Now, when you think about this, they even tried to change the identity of these men by changing their names. They tried to totally change their identity. But listen, our, our identity is with God tonight. Amen? And, and our faithfulness to Christ. Where we're, we're, you know what? We're living in a day, we really are, where folks just aren't as faithful to the house of God as they used to be. We're kind of in that day, I think. And spectators don't want to be participants. And a lot of folks want to have a church where they just don't have to be accountable at all. You know, come and go, no attachment. I'll be honest with you. That's why some of these mega churches have grown uh, crazy wild uh, numbers of people because you can go to that church and never have a connection, never be accountable. Most folks won't even know who you are. And you know what? Here's why some of them grow so rapidly and so large. That's kind of what folks want these days. They want, they want their Christianity with no commitments. Come and go. Nobody will know if he is there or not. Nobody will miss you. Unaccountable. But you know what? I think this. If you want God's blessing upon you, you've got to learn to be faithful first. Amen? I think we ought to be learned to be faithful first. And it's always a personal thing. Remember what I said we preached a little bit this morning? We talked about what was the first word? Walk. And that's something we do by the time we get up till we go to bed. Our walk with God. It ought to be a faithful walk. Faithful in our prayers. Faithful in our giving. Faithful in our witnessing. Faithful in reading the word of God. Faithful in worship. We ought to be faithful. Principle number four. Ready? Principle number four. Faithfulness is most satisfying and strengthening more than anything else in the world. Being faithful to God will strengthen you. Let's just make that a simple statement. Principle number four. Being faithful to God will strengthen you. Amen? It, it'll, it'll satisfy you absolutely more than anything else you can do in the world. There's a lot of things we can do. And they're not all sinful, are they? There's a lot of things we can do in life. And, and when we're, uh, we've had church on Sunday, we've got a whole week to go out and do something. There's a lot of things we can do tonight, and some of them are really good things. 
you can really enjoy. But I'll tell you something, being faithful to God is the most satisfying thing you'll ever do. Being faithful to God tonight is the most strengthening thing you will ever do. Look at verse 12 through 15. We're still in chapter 1. Verses 12 through 15. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. Let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our continents see they, they're, they're, they're refusing to eat the king's meat and, and drink. And they're saying, you know what? Our God can take care of us. And so they put them on trial for 10 days. Verse 13, uh, then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's bread, meat and as it seest, deal with thy servant. So he consented to them in this manner and he proved them 10 days. He tried them 10 days. Hey, you want to go 10 days without the king's portion? Let's see who looks the best when it's all said and done. In verse 15, and at the end of 10 days, their countenances, their appearance, appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. You know what? Their faithfulness to God was blessed by God. <clears throat> their faithfulness to God made them stronger than everybody else. Their faithfulness to God even gave them a better appearance than everyone else. I'll tell you what, uh, there's nothing in this world uh, that the world has to offer you that will do you as good as you being faithful to God. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. You know, I'm the, I'm the God-called pastor of Gospel Light Church. And I'm going to tell you something. I must be faithful. Yeah. Brother James... You're a God-called deacon and also appointed by this church. You must be faithful. We've got trustees in this church. That's church-appointed positions, and I believe it makes you a part of the church leadership. Do I think that means? You ought to be faithful. Those of you that teach a class, those of you that work in the nursery, those that work in the kitchen, those that work with the youth, there's so many different areas of service and and, and those that are gifted to sing and go on. Hey, I could go on and on and on with the list. And it would actually take in the whole church before it's over with. Right. <laughs> yeah, I guess what I'm telling you from the pulpit to the back door, we ought to just be faithful. Amen. Amen. We ought to just all be faithful tonight. Because that's what will please God. That's what will satisfy your soul. And that's what will give you strength that nothing else in the world can give you tonight. So listen, church, being faithful to God and his church, uh, it'll bless you. It'll strengthen you more than anything else in the world. I mean, we don't want to coast into heaven, do we? Why don't we just be faithful to the very end? <laughs> Amen? Let's be faithful. Now, here, here's what I want you to get about Daniel. I'm about done. I have some good principles, by the way. Get this about Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 1, I'm not going to go back and read it, but I'll just say this. It is there. He's about 17, 18 years old, and he begins as a young man. And the Bible says he purposed in his heart, and God said he was faithful. Now, in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel is now a much older man, and God is still saying he is faithful. And then when we get to the end of Daniel's life, everybody still in Daniel? Turn to the last chapter, last verse. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 13. Daniel 1.1, 1, 1, he's a young man in the beginning. Daniel 6, he's now older. God's still got his hand upon him. He's still being faithful. But now notice at the end of his life, look what God says in Daniel 12 verse 13. But go thou thy way till what? Till the end be. Hey, we've had a good start. Daniel 6, we're, have, we're having good midlife, but God says, let's have a good ending too. Amen. Go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Praise God. God is saying, Daniel, you started out faithful. You remained faithful. Daniel, I want you to end faithful. Remember what I said? A lot of folks start well. Not everybody finishes well. Understand. And then, then God said, and thou shalt rest 
He's speaking of death. Daniel, get ready. You're going to die one of these days. As a very old man, but you're going to die. And God says, you've been faithful. I'm going to give you rest. He says, stand in thy lot at the end of the days. And I think he's saying, end well. End well, Daniel. Church, have you been faithful tonight? Have you? Will we really hear when we make it home to heaven, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Will we be known not only on earth for being faithful, will we be known in heaven for having been faithful? Now, I'm, listen to me. I'm, I'm going to close with this statement. I certainly do not compare myself to Daniel by any means. But as a young man, I purposed in my heart that I would obey God and preach his word. Been here what we, we just celebrated 44 years, but really I was preaching about three years before that, before I actually came. So I've been preaching about 47 years. You know what? And I'm still preaching. And here's the thing. I'm not looking back at the start too much these days. Know what I'm saying? I'm not looking back at the beginning but I don't, I don't really consider, I don't, I don't go back in my mind too much to the starting point. That's long gone. I'm starting to look more at the finishing line. <laughs> right? I, I mean, hey, been a good life. God's been so good. And I want to remain faithful until the end. Till the end. Oh, I've got to remain faithful. Why? Because I want to be blessed by God. And being faithful... I hope you got this. Being faithful is the one thing that God can bless me most for me doing. If I just remain faithful. Remain faithful until you get to the finish line. And then we'll get some rest like old Daniel. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Heaven's going to be real. Amen. And the thing that God blesses most is our faithfulness. Tell you what, that was better for you than the Super Bowl any day of the week. Let's, let's stand and pray. Have a verse, just have a verse of invitation. If you need prayer, you come. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight. Such a sweet spirit in the house of God. And Lord, I enjoyed so much just sharing scripture tonight that you laid on our heart. What an example Daniel has been to all of us. Lord, he made his mind up. He purposed in his heart. It was intentional. He did it on purpose. And Lord, he remained faithful to you until the end. Father, I pray tonight, bless the Gospelite family. Lord, this church has so many talents and so many gifts, and yet none of that is as important as us just being faithful. Blessed tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One verse. You need prayer? Come on. Amen. God bless you. It's been a good day. Amen. It really has. Let's sing our song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And everybody said praise the Lord. God bless you.